Now, what do I do for fun in the winter in Scotland, I hear you ask? Well, the Films of Scotland has the answer. Because 31 years ago, on this very spot, thousands of people gathered to partake in a very strange tradition. They bought lots of food, they bought lots of drink. Actually, they bought loads of drink and some very heavy stones. And then, from all sides, strange figures appear, pulling small trains of polished granite. This is the Grand Match, the world's greatest curling competition on the Lake of Menteith in Stirlingshire. The atmosphere is absolutely tremendous and electric. In the morning, in 79, the skies were absolutely clear and the sun was shining bright. And you had 2,400 curlers all going on to the ice, dragging stones, and they get the equipment out. Possibly a wee dram before the start, just to get in the right mood. Then the the, the waiting for the cannon. Some people might say it's only the Scots who could make an art of throwing stones. And it was the perfect day. Crisp winter, not a cloud in the sky. We just couldn't go wrong. The light was exquisite. Also had access to a helicopter. Lord Elgin had flown in with his chopper to, to fire his wee cannon to start the day. So we had the helicopter there. So again, those lovely, big, wide uh, shots over the ice with these little figures on their shadows. It was a perfect day, absolutely perfect day. And there, in one day shoot, you've got a whole film. There's a need for at least seven inches of good ice. And that's a requirement that may not be met out of doors for 10, 15, even 20 years. So the grand match is remembered, whether it's 1899 or 1979. It's quite frightening, actually, if you look at it from the point of view of weight. A rink with eight players and their stones and equipment is almost averaging a ton. So if you have 300 rinks on the ice, you have 300 tons. That's without spectators. They are there to enjoy a good day out and uh, at the same time, the atmosphere of having played in the Grand Match is something most cuddlers never experience, but when they do, it's a tremendous day. Moments like these bring to mind the three reasons suggested to explain the uniqueness of the Grand Match in the world of sport. Firstly, it very rarely takes place. Secondly, when it does, the result doesn't matter. And thirdly, certain well-known stimulants are not discouraged. We actually got on the bus and I did a head count and we were one shot. And two of us went to look for him and we found him stretched out in the ice, unconscious with drink. So we dragged him to the side and, and got him onto the bus. We just tied a scarf around his ankles and pulled him. I won't mention his name, but he will know. <laughs> That's a scene we may never see again. Do you realise that? I raged recently when, you know, they got so close to it this year to have another grand match. You thought, fantastic. And then all the bureaucrats and the health and safety people said, oh, no, no, it's not, it's, no, 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 it won't be safe. And you can't. What are we doing? Look at the joy of that day. And now it's been taken away from people doing that again. I think that's sad, isn't it? As for the day itself, the sun had shone from first to last. It had shone on everyone and everything. What a pity, someone said, that all sports could not be as pleasant, convivial, informal, and as flexible in the rules. Maybe then we would all be as happy as the players of the roaring game.